Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we start the next session. We've had two excellent sessions this morning and early this afternoon, this afternoon, which has not only provided us with having some extremely interesting historical background, but I think has raised some key um, conceptual and policy issues relevant to what we now turn to. Uh, why trust broke down, and then in the next session, what do we do to restore trust? Certainly, the reciprocal lack of trust and confidence, which is probably now at its lowest ebb since uh, the early 1980s, the, the situation that Roderick Braithwaite outlined in the, first, uh, in the first speech this morning, stems from divergent perceptions, and, and in some cases, I, I feel now sharply divergent, and in some respects increasingly divergent, of the events of the last 25 or 30 years. And these predate the Ukrainian conflict. So on NATO's evolving role, the enlargement of the alliance, uh, US uh, ballistic missile defense and the prompt global strike capabilities, um, other arms control, control issues as well, which are, which are very important and are actually quite neglected, um, apart from experts like Alexei Arbatov. Um, and, and also, of course, the promotion by the West of liberal democratic norms um, which has also included interventions in uh, Middle East and North Africa. So uh, quite an exhaustive list of, of areas where there are sharp differences. And I think possibly the most baleful legacy of the Ukrainian conflict, differing views on historical events which stretch back to the Second World War and possibly even before that. Um, and also something uh, that Alexei and I were talking about in the break, the, uh, the vicious, sometimes vicious rhetoric and mudslinging in the very fora where diplomatic engagement is needed, so at the United Nations and at the OSCE. Anyway, to discuss this in more detail, first of all, we have an old friend, Alexei Gramwika, um, director, recently became director of the Institute of Europe of the Russian Academy of Sciences, um, uh, an expert of the Ruski Mir Foundation, president of the Russian Association of European Studies, um, and a specialist in European politics, European integration, and I would think probably Russia's leading expert, certainly on British politics. You understand I'm reading this because of uh, Alexei's long list of uh, achievements. Um, he's also the chairperson of the Scholarly Council of the in Institute of Europe, the editor-in-chief of the quarterly journal Contemporary Europe, Savrimienaya Europa, which uh, I have the latest copy of here. Um, and also a member of the Academic Council for the Russian Foreign Minister and of the Ap Academic Board of the Security Council of Russia. So well linked into the policy, um, the policy world as well. And on my right, on your left, just to get it right this time, uh, Mary Dejevsky, a writer and broadcaster, um, and somebody whose articles I always read with great interest, always very constructive um, and uh, an interesting take on a range of issues, not least on Russia and its relations in the West. Um, Mary is a former foreign correspondent in Moscow, Paris, and Washington, special correspondent in China and many parts of Europe. She is a member of the Valdai Group, very interesting, um, and meets the Russian leaders each autumn, uh, obviously in the autumn Valdai session, um, and a member of the Chatham House uh, think tank. And she is now the chief editorial writer and a columnist at The Independent, as well as obviously contributing to The Guardian um, and other sources.